All right, all right. Welcome back to the show. It is Christine Jewell, and we are here with you today. Look who's here with you today. If you guys are seeing us on video, the king, Mark Jewell, is back on the show with me. In the house. He's in the house. <laughs> Woo -hoo. I was doing another podcast interview yesterday, and I always ask people, what do you guys want to hear more of on this show? And I always get the same <laughs> top comments. So I'm like, okay, we got to roll with this. So people want to hear more about relationships, communication, the masculine, the feminine, how do you guys work together, how to work together. Uh, so I think relationships are where it's at. I, I still maintain that the number one relationship you got to work on is the one with yourself, the one with God first. But today, Mark and I are going to talk about five conversations we have on a regular basis that keep our marriage alive, keep our relationship alive, keep us not only on good terms with each other, but on the same page, moving forward um, with our dreams and stuff like that. So you ready for it? I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's talk about conversations. Let's talk about conversations. By the way, this is our second time going through this because the first time we tried to do it was a LinkedIn live that was scheduled. And this was the topic. And we had so much stuff going on with technology. It's so easy to get frustrated and be like, ah, oh, things aren't working and screw it. We're going to throw it in the garbage. But here we are again. You mess it up, you dress it up, you do it again. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, it's just like anything else. If we're arguing or can't get along about something, it's like, okay, let's just scratch that. Let's just do it again. Do it again, do it again. Here we All are. All right, let's start at the top of the day. So we're going to walk you through the five conversations that we have on a regular basis. Some of these things are really just part of our daily rhythm, part of our daily flow. And we're going to start with the first thing we do at the top of the day. And uh, I'm going to let Mark start with this because there's a reason why you started doing this. There was, <clears throat> there was a reason. So the uh, what Christine's referring to to cut to the chase is something called the daily brief. <clears throat> this is a quick email I put together in the morning. I try to have it out by 8.30 in the morning, generally. That's kind of my cutoff time for me. If it happen happens later, it's fine. But the whole point behind the daily brief is it's a synopsis of what's coming up today. Here's a little bit of what, uh, what we can look ahead to. This is what's coming up on the schedule. This is where time and resources are getting allocated. Here's any important financial updates or something like that. Or, hey, we had a payment hit the account. Make sure that we're transferring it to the right places. And then generally, I try to think uh, or take something that I am reflecting on. <clears throat> Maybe it's a piece of scripture or something that I heard in a podcast. I summarize that for Christine. I write down kind of the, this was my this is what I'm thinking about or this is my lesson from it. And then sometimes I'll put in uh, a little prayer for the family or a prayer for us. And I write that out. Um, <clears throat> full transparency, prayer life is something that I'm growing in. It's not something I'm fully feel great at um, at this point in my life. I, I, know, I know that there's, there's no way to screw it up, but it's always it's a, it's a learning process for me. So writing it out is often easier for, than me for speaking it out. <clears throat> so I write that out. Probably sounds like a lot, but it's probably all in all a three, max four paragraph email. <clears throat> sometimes it's just me rambling, sharing what's on my mind. Sometimes I voice record it. Sometimes I sit down on my computer and I type it out. It depends on the um, on what's happening. Often I'm traveling from dropping the kids off at school to um, uh, to the gym, and I've got about a half an hour on that drive. So I'll voice record it while I'm driving from one place to the other. But the daily brief is there to create some communication now uh, be between us at the top of the day. So Christine is a little bit more aware uh, of, of what's going on in my day. Now, that's the what. Here's the the why <laughs> behind behind this thing. Well, yeah, I was okay. Share this is that. this is the important thing. So the um, the the why behind this. Number one, I needed to be more intentional about how I experienced my day. I wanted to raise this standard for how I get to experience my time, my experience in life. And notice I'm using my, and and this is something I did for me, um, because I know Christine's big on like, hey, you get the first thing, the number one thing is is your 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 relationship with you, your relationship with God is focus on that first. I needed to do that. Now, I also know that I'm the first person that I will let down and quit on <laughs> given anything that's going on. So when it gets hard, when I get squeezed, when there's when it's when it's easy to quit things, um when I get stressed, I will uh, I will stop doing things for myself often. 
And so having someone to send it to gave me a little bit of accountability. Once I started sending this to Christine, uh, what I noticed is that the response was well received. She likes reading about what's going on in my head. She likes reading about what's going on, uh, what's what's coming up in the day. It's a way for me to lead the family, kind of prep the family, uh, uncover any p- potential pitfalls beforehand. And uh, quite frankly, we're uh, I think today I wrote day number fifty six. I usually do it Monday through Friday. I didn't do it while we we're on vacation. I generally don't do it on the weekends unless I'm just feeling it. Uh, so this isn't like a true daily, daily thing, but it's Monday through Friday, it keeps us in communication and uh, helps me think through my day, but also it helps me lead the family with a greater level of intention, particularly in our communication between Christine and myself. Yes, 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 yes. I wanna say too, um, well, I wanna tap onto that a couple of things. So first of all, I do believe that this initial daily brief was born out of frustration. So I just wanna say that some of you that are listening, you know, some of the best things that we've done have either been birthed out of frustration, the rub, right? Friction of like, oh, we're just like keep banging heads or we think we're on mm-hmm. the same page and we're not, or inspiration, right? We're inspired to do something. We're inspired to create something. Both exist, right? Whenever you have friction, it shows you like, okay, it's an opportunity to get back into integrity, back into alignment. Maybe we need a new system. And so what we were finding was that between the kids, all the driving that goes on, three hours a day of driving activities. One of the kids is working. One of the kids is in a rep, you know, volleyball. The other one goes to farm after school. We're doing podcast interviews, client calls all day. We're traveling. There's mom lives with us. There's a lot of logistics. And so you try to, you try to nail everything, right? We have shared calendars. It's really easy to be like, well, just check the calendar. And, but that wasn't working right? That wasn't working. And so what was happening is we were spending a lot of bandwidth. I was spending a lot of bandwidth asking like, what's going on? Where are you at? What time is so-and-so getting picked up? And there was a lot of this bandwidth being wasted, number one, on logistical things and asking ourselves the same questions over and over again, being frustrated, having to answer the same questions over again. And to be honest, it was just sucking up bandwidth that could have been used towards creative outlets, creative Mm -hmm. endeavors. So I wanted to say that number one, it was born out of that frustration and figuring out that, look, we thought we had a good system, but it wasn't working. And it's very easy to get frustrated and be like, well, don't you know, you should know what our kids are up to. You should know what's on the calendar. But that's the whole point is it, well, it doesn't matter what we should know. The fact is it's not working. So let's make it better. So we started this daily brief. He started the daily brief. And I have to say, yes, it was like, Every woman I speak to is like, I just want to (laughs) know what's going on inside his head. I want him to communicate with him. I want him to communicate with me. And I want him to bring me into his day, his life, his thoughts. You know, many men I work with and you probably work with, and you know, guys like they might be thinking about a lot of things, don't always express a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. And so what that did is not only did it help clean up our logistics and sort of set the course for the pace. But I like the word that you used about leading the family. It's like you're initiating at the top of the day. You're leading the conversation. It provides clarity. It provides structure. And I love the fact that there's sometimes it's like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need prayer on this. Or sometimes he knows I'm struggling with something. And he's like, I feel God is just telling me, you know, giving us this message. And there's a word of encouragement. So there's always logistics, encouragement, uh, a shared prayer, and it's just a really great pace to the day. And I, I want to say this final thing because this is something I've shared with many of my clients, and every single man who started to do the daily brief said the same thing to me. Wow, she's responding differently to me. And so here's the thing, guys. You can sit down and do this on your own time, your own way, make it your own thing, mm-hmm. but just play with that, right? And uh, it's important that it's not just spewing out logistics, but there's a point of really connection, sharing something from your heart. I love getting the scripture. I love getting the prayer, and it makes me feel like we're united. Mm-hmm. But you know, for those uh, for those of you guys that are listening, that are you know, tactical, more pragmatic, <clears throat> like myself, just thinking through, hey, like what's the what's the simplest way to execute through the most amount of things all day? That's generally what we're thinking about. Um, you know, think of this as a time saver, energy saver. It's, it's going to require, well, I, and I understand like, and I understand that's important to the feminine. What's often more important for the man, for the, for the masculine is like, Hey, we got a lot of stuff to get done and 
that's the reality. So <clears throat> that's what we focus on. So I'm just focused. Um, I, I, I do it now because I realize how important it is to her. I do it now because I realize how much it helps me think through my day. And the, the even more pragmatic side of myself would say, like, listen, like, I've gone and connected the calendars. Like, I had the assistant do it. Like, Ani has taken care of, and, like, you can see my calendar. I know it's on her calendar all the time. If I want to know what she's up to, I just go look at it. Her brain works differently than mine. Her body works differently than mine. And in order to keep great communication in the house, great communication within the family when we have so many logistics. And by the way, I mean, travel. I mean, I flew 50,000 miles since January 1st, and it's April 2nd while we're recording this. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like there's a lot happening around here. Um, even just on two days ago, I started the monthly brief, and I was like <laughs> – <the laughs> New, daily, that's an upgrade, the, the monthly brief. The daily brief was, was working so well. Like, you know what? And, and this is – but this is what it does for me. It allows me – it forces me How's to sit down in 15 like minutes or less – I sit down, I look at my calendar, I think through what's on the to-do list, I think through what's on the personal list, not just the work list, and, and hey, you know what, we're going to be running a little bit today. On a given day when the kids are here, I might spend three hours in my truck driving them around to and from schools and practices and all the things. And so that's a that can be a huge disruption over the course of the day, and we still got to get the work done. We still have to have you know some, some time for us to connect, and we'll get to the next one here in a minute. Um, so there's a lot of in, intentional planning that goes into it and i'll be honest guys i'm not a planner this is not something that's native to my brain is is being a planner but i can this is something i can do from from a place of service and it works yes do it from service do it because it works um and that is not his excuse the fact that you're not a planner that's like saying i'm naturally disorganized mm -hmm. uh every time you want to grow we want to evolve we got to up level so we get to up level communication if we want more clarity more unity more just connection so okay the second thing that we do so for, first thing daily brief right is there a system for us to get on the same page connect share some bit of our hearts number two is the daily prayer so for us uh, and again we are not always nailing these every day but they're five they're on a regular basis like these are things that we have mm -hmm. pretty much in a rhythm of the daily prayer, again, was something I requested. So look, <laughs> your woman might be requesting a lot of communication. I'm a communicator. So is so are you, though. Uh, but for me, like one of the things that we really committed was God first. And this year, our word was supernatural unification. So I believe, we believe unification leads to multiplication. We are now in the game of exponentials. We are done playing addition. We're done like him running in his lane, me running in my lane, and then like just trying to come back together. We realize the power that comes to unification. So the daily prayer, honestly, some days it's like 30 seconds. Some days it's three minutes. Some days it's 10 minutes. Some days, whatever. Um, some days he leads it. Some days I lead it. Some days we do it together. It really just depends. But it's just that moment, that pause for us at the top of the day First things first to say, okay, God, we, we see you, we recognize you, we worship you, we put you at the core. We pray about what's on our heart. We pray about our work. We dedicate our work to the Lord. Obviously, we cover our children. And then we just pray for clarity and wisdom and guidance together. And I think that's a huge piece because for, for me anyways, that's like a glue, you know, the, the glue that it holds you together. Otherwise, you just get up, you grab your phone, she grabs her phone, you run one direction, she runs one direction. Mm -hmm. You got your own ideas. She's got her, her ideas, your plans, her plans, <clears throat> your way, her way. And there's all this like disconnect the whole day long. And so then it's like you ask people like, what's the glue that holds you together? I've asked couples that question so many times and they just all look at each other like, what is the glue? And then <laughs> usually it's your kids. Usually it's your kids or, you know, something else that they have together. But it's like, what's the thing, the essence, the, the glue, right? That when your kids move out, then what? That's why I get phone calls from a lot of people whose kids are about to move out and they go, wait a second. I don't know if I want to keep hanging out with this person. We need to get to know each other. Um, so the daily prayer, anyways, I just wanted to say that super powerful. We are spiritual beings. We serve God. It shows our reverence. It shows our priorities. And it puts first things per first, which is one of the rules, like the universal laws of how God created things, is you put first things first, you get things in the right order, and then there's flow, and then there's blessing, and then there's prosperity, mm -hmm. just like our finances, right? So that's our time, the first fruit of our time at the top of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay.
Absolutely. I think you can think about it in the, you know, everything in the world is it operates on cycles, right? I mean, God programmed this thing to just, to just look at the four seasons, right? You have a, you have a winter and then you have it followed by a spring, followed by a summer, followed by a fall season, right? And it's mm-hmm. and your day operates exactly the same, mm-hmm. right? You have your winter, which is your sleep cycle. And then you have your morning, which is your spring, your, your work day and your, or the rest of the day, which is the summer. And then you get into the fall, which is the evening. There's four main parts of the day. Mm-hmm. What season do you plant in? Mm-hmm. Right? If you're planting in winter, there's going to be no harvest. If you're planting in the, in the fall, right? Uh, you're, you're waiting to the end of the day. There's not going to be as much to, to tend during the summer. And so the, uh, the, the, the best answer is to just put this little seed planting exercise right at the onset of the day. We schedule it for eight o'clock and um, this will be one of those things. If you decide to do this, that will be the easiest in the world to punt. I know I've done it. <laughs> so um, yeah, we've been working really hard to make it more of a priority to make it something that is just the standard for how we operate. So there are days when I'm just not here. Uh, at eight o'clock, I'm traveling. She's traveling. Uh, we're in between places, and so uh, at at about eight or somewhere between eight and eight thirty, I'm picking up the phone and calling, right, to do the prayer time. Sometimes from the parking lot at the gym, right, yeah. or from the hotel room in the morning, and we're FaceTiming or we're calling and and doing it there. So once because you're going to have travel schedules, you're busy people. Um, I assume if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably the nature of your life. There's a lot going on, so. Find a way, make it a priority, plant those seeds early in the day with your partner and, and just get into the practice. You know, I mentioned early on, like this is you know, prayer life for me is something that's newer. It's something I don't feel great at, it's something I'm practicing. And so uh, I don't have my earthly father here on the, um, on the, on the planet uh, anymore. And uh, so I practice in talking with the heavenly father like I used to talk with my dad. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's the easiest way I can put it for you guys to just say, hey, like, have a conversation with dad. Yeah. And I want to just finish this piece with Ecclesiastes 412 because, and I love the amplified version of the Bible, you guys, because it really pulls out certain words. But it says, and though, and though one can overpower him or her who is alone. So if you're alone, you're easily overpowered. Mm-hmm. Two can resist. But a cord of three strands is not easily broken. What does that mean? If you think about it, when you operate as a lone wolf, if you go out in the world alone, like it's easy to, you can go hard, you can have will, you can have discipline, but you get worn down easier, right? You're just easily, more easily tore down. Two together, stronger, right? We go farther together. But a cord of three strands, God is at the core. You're talking about the creator of everything, the one who put the path before you, the one who knows why he brought us together. Like, hello, I want th- I want that guy on our side, <laughs> right? So mm-hmm. now we're a cord of three strands. So it's my spirit, his spirit, the Holy Spirit. We're going out. Whatever that battle is you're facing in your life, maybe there's things going on at work. Maybe you guys are facing health crisis, things with your kids. I mean, we have six children. We've gone through stuff. I've gone through stuff with the older kids and I'm sure we'll go through it with the younger kids. You know, when you start hitting those teenage years and 18, 20, 21, 22, and they get their own ideas and you train them to be fiercely independent. And all of a sudden it's, it's working against you. Like you, you gotta have that strength that comes from somewhere. And you know, our well alone is only so deep. Like I I think that we kind of Mm -hmm. get this idea of why I should have everything I need inside me. I don't need anyone else. And that's true. And it's not true, right? It's yes. And we're also created for each other. God created two and he, he brought them on the earth together. Otherwise we would just still have one man roaming around (laughs) alone uh, on the planet. We are created for community. We're created for each other. So don't negate the power of coming together in community in prayer. And if you're single and you're listening to this, you can pray with your friends. You can pray with the community. You can get in prayer circles, right? There's this isn't just about you and you know the husband or whatever, but your children. Like start the top of your day with this practice. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I, one, one one last little thing that's in, uh, that just popped into my head. I was reading this or hearing this on a podcast the other day about you know, divorce rates of couples, mm. and, and I think I'm, I'm maybe butchering the numbers, and I, I can't yeah, see if uh, I can look at the source for you right here at the moment, but. The, uh, you know, the, the, we all know like the natural divorce rate is something between 50 and 60%. That's, uh, that's pretty common. We know that the divorce rate of, of couples who go to church together, <clears throat> uh, 
our families who who go to church is something like forty percent, so slightly lower than uh, than the typical divorce rate. Those that are uh, reading the Bible is like twenty percent, mm-hmm. and so it drops significantly to those that are not reading the Bible. But those that actually pray together is something like point two, like two percent, like two like percent. Yeah. Okay. So you can start to see. I mean, that's a pretty. We're big, in it to win it, y'all. <laughs> We're in it to win job. it because. <laughs> so, so what are the leading indicators that get the lagging results? Right, a leading indicator in my life. Write the daily brief. Number two, pray together. Right, those two things are bringing us closer together. Our communication is better. It greases the skids of the entire day. Yeah, and I want to say, like, you're not talking to two people <clears throat> that have been married for fifty years. We both have been divorced. I've been through multiple cycles of horrible relationships. So this is working really well. And the one thing that I've always longed for and always desired and knew that I was created for was this type of union, this type of communication. But I also know very vividly what it's like to do it completely opposite, right? To completely be like, yep, wake up, go, go, go. I got a business to run. I got my my kingdom to build, my empire. Good luck. You're on your own. And you're just like sleeping next to someone but you don't get each other. You don't have a shared vision. You don't have a shared covering over your marriage or your relationship. You don't have a blessing over your businesses. Like it's a completely different way of doing life, business and everything else. So obviously we have shifted from the world's model and structure to the heavenly model. And we're just following the blueprint that's in the book Mm -hmm. and it's working like it's working and we're seeing the fruits, right? Like just like the harvest. So we're sharing what's working for us from this side, but also I just want you to know, like we've both been on the other side where it was like constantly having to fight for your life to just go forward and pursue what you felt like you were here to do, you know, your business and all that stuff. Okay. Let's go into the third conversation we have on a regular basis. So this is something else that happens pretty much on the daily Uh, around here. We talk a lot about intentional habits. And part of that is transitions from one role, one mode into another mode, right? So we have the practice at the end of the day from to shift out of work mode. We're back to back on calls. There's kids usually before the kids get picked up or the kids come home, or we definitely before we sit down for dinner as much as we can, we usually do a walk, right? We have a walk and talk. And actually, this is one of our practices of keeping the energy clean. So you've heard me talk a lot about the fact that we made a commitment early on. We have an agreement. I think you, if you're a couple, you need to have agreements. And one of our agreements is if it gets frictioning in the air, if the energy gets muddy, we keep the energy clean. So we actually did the walk because a number one, my, my love language is quality time. So I love a walk, especially when the kids are here and there's a lot of activity in the house but also it created an opportunity for us to to just clean up the air and so that there's not this stuff, resentments that build or misunderstandings or whatever, right? And so what I've noticed is as we go through our transition walk, our walk and talk, we have a three mile loop that we walk. And so like the first mile, you know, if we had a good day and it's light, the load was light, the work was fun, if the kids are out, you know, and it's there's not a lot of logistical things, it's usually pretty easy, we're, we're pretty synced up. But if the load was heavy on both sides and there was a lot of work and back to back and now there's logistics that we're moving into the evening, sometimes things can stack. And so we have found that especially after a weekend, sometimes there's a lot of activity or people over. The first mile is like we got to work things out. You know, we're just like, okay, I'm talking about what's heavy on my heart or what I'm wrestling with or he's talking about what you're wrestling with. Mm -hmm. And then it's like we clean it up. I love it because that's how energy works, right? It works in motion as you're moving and you're working things out. You are working things out. So we work it out. And then by about one mile in, uh, halfway around the loop, like we're back in stride again. You know, our steps are sinking up. We're holding hands. And now we're shifting away from more of the heavy talk or serious talk or heady talk into a lighter, more creative, Mm heart-centered communication. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good practice. Sometimes we've had to walk the loop a couple times. Let's be, let's be honest. But, <laughs> Only <laughs> once have I ever turned around and walked the opposite direction too. So, that's it. so it's not perfect, but you know it, it, it's. You know, you and sometimes about, like, it's a sauna. It's sometimes the sauna works. Sometimes right? we sit in the sauna. Yeah, a, a sauna. Um, you can do a workout together. You go for a walk. I mean, everybody lives in a different environment and different places and different things going on. Uh, but if we're home. <clears throat> 
we're, we're, we're actively seeking to make that, that transition. And, and the kids, honestly, even when the kids are here, if we just say, Hey, we're going for a walk. Like they know, they know, they know, yeah. they know what's up and, and, and they get to experience <laughs> the, you know, the, the benefit of seeing people make that, make themselves, make their relationship a priority. They get to see the benefit of how we act when we come back and we're in the kitchen because the, the kids sense it, right? If you're, if there's tension, if there's energy tension, does not lie, they, they, they know, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're usually hiding in their rooms if, <laughs> if the tension is a little bit high. And then no, we come okay. back and everybody, but what, what happens when you walk back in the house from whatever you do, the house, the house itself will actually breathe easier. Yes. And everybody will feel more engaged and um, safer. Yeah. Right. And, and that's you- another one of our agreements is making sure that our house is a safe place, that it feels good to be in here, mm-hmm. that the energy is light, the atmosphere is clean. So that's, you know, we have a mat when we walk in, you see it, it's got the name Gravitas. We wanted this to be a grounding place, a healing place. Mm-hmm. So it's a great reminder that that's like, we're first called to do that before we're called to carry our baggage around the house, yeah. you know, and our resentments and our grudges, because you do not want resentment to start stacking inside of your relationship nothing is more dangerous you know it's like death by a thousand paper cuts you bleed each other out so if you harbor resentments you start building walls you start withholding you start hiding you start shutting down before you know it there's layers of hardening that happen around your heart and it's a lot harder at that point to crack each other open Mm -hmm. than it is if you're just sweeping right you're just sweeping house you're sweeping away the stuff And I will say this, if you have an agreement that like, hey, that's just what, like, that's what we both agree to. That's what we both want. If one of us is acting up, you know, or we're getting tense, maybe he's anxious or I'm getting, you know, whatever, discouraged about something that's usually our default. um, We can call each other up and out of it instead of just being like, oh, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You know, that's not the conversation we have. The conversation is, okay, let's go for a walk. Let's talk about it. Do you want to like move this out or something Mm -hmm. like that? And by by the way, a lot of you guys are going to have, excuse me, a lot of you guys are going to have a woman who, uh, whose, whose love language is quality time will be the majority. And, and you can, that a thing? I believe this to be very accurate, actually. <laughs> this is Mark Jewell's life observation. <laughs> this is Mark Jewell's life observation. If nothing else, you're going to want, you're going to have a woman who, who needs to feel seen and heard. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when you, when you go on the walk or you, whatever you're doing together and do a little workout together, do some yard work together, whatever you're doing together, um, you do your best to just make her feel heard. There's a, there's a section of that first mile to mile and a half where I probably just don't say a lot. Sometimes I talk for the whole mile. <laughs> but sometimes you talk for the whole mile. Sometimes I'll talk, right? I mean, they're, 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 that's a little bit more rare. That'd be like 5% of the time versus 95%. Maybe of like the time. 20% mm, of the time. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so uh, there, there are times, right, when you just got to get, some, get something off your chest. But, you know, let's, uh, a lot of that is just holding space, just letting them talk. And well, I want to go back to what Mark said earlier. Like when he was talking about doing the daily brief, you were talking about doing the daily brief. That's the way you process, right? It's a lot easier for you to process your thoughts in writing. So Mm -hmm. you like to do those writings. I process talking. So I need to like just work through things. And often I will come up with my own answers, my own solutions. I'll feel better because I'm actually just emptying myself, right? So I'm emptying the energy, the stuff, the density, and then I'm clearing the space. And obviously when you're lighter, boom, the answers come in. I mean, that's a lot of what coaching is or things like that is people are talking. We're just helping you remember what you know. So Mark does a great job of holding space without necessarily taking it all on. Sometimes he takes it on and then he needs to go shake it off. That's another conversation for a different day of how to keep our container and our vessel clean. So we hold space for each other. But I just want to say, know the way that you both process information, because just because she's talking doesn't mean you're a failure or you need to fix it or you need to rush to, or you're doing anything wrong. It's just like, maybe she just needs to empty. Maybe she just needs to process. Maybe he's the one that needs to empty and process. And you're more of a reserved, quiet person and you process differently through journaling or something else. Mm -hmm. So know each other because it helps not to take things so personally, because when we get offended we're easily manipulated and then we manip- like we just get baited into these useless conversations and we waste a lot of energy mm-hmm. um by the way i wanted to go back to this before i go to the final two is that the daily brief you know i started saving these in a file and then mark started saving and i know 
it's really cool whether you're doing a daily brief or a daily message for your kid or journals. Like I have a whole stack of journals down there. It is so awesome to document our lives, our conversations, what's happening. It's going to be really cool for us a year from now or two years from now or maybe 20 years from now to go back and read what was going on in our life. What were we praying about? What were we struggling with? What were we celebrating? Like, it's just so cool. If nothing else, it's an amazing, beautiful way to document what's mm-hmm. going on. So, and, and by the way, if that's of interest, I'll be honest, I fully automated that. I set up a Zapier zap yeah. that just, I, I copy yeah. in that. You can email automate address. all this. It's fully, it just goes, dumps it into a Google Doc, yeah. and I can go back and make something of it later on in life or have Man. chat chat gpt write a book out of it or something <laughs> exactly you, <know? laughs> you gotta love ai okay ai can be your friend okay let's go into conversation number four mm-hmm. what's next on your list <laughs> do you remember the the four no yes you do know okay the the fourth one is our dream time oh yes our okay. dream time mm-hmm. our vision time so what do we start with we got the daily brief we got the daily prayer we got the the walk, right? Mm-hmm. The the transition at the end of the day. Yep. We got the the goal planning, vision dreaming mm-hmm. stuff. The vision dreaming stuff. So, yeah, at the end of the day, we, we it's very easy for you to get bound up. It's very easy for us to get bound up through the whole the, like the slog of all the things that you've got going on day to day, like yesterday, today, tomorrow, tomorrow. Five podcast interviews, almost back to back. There's almost nothing else that's getting done tomorrow in the terms of the, the the bigger picture so it's important that we have a little bit of time here and there um usually at least for us once a month where we can uh, we, we we take a week where once a quarter once a well the, there's the monthly like, oh yeah the, you know, month, the, the yeah. last week of the month right so the last week of the month last week of the quarter are dedicated to getting off the grid shutting the normal things down so in my case i don't do coaching calls i, I may do a, a sales call to catch up on or something during that time frame but for the most part that's there it's it becomes a catch-all for anything that needs to get caught up on that's not feeling complete but there's also some time in there to to kick back and dream and then once a quarter i think there's usually something like we're getting away like we're actually going we just got back from mexico um used our membership to go down there to the to the resort so went to mexico five days to really just cool the jets because when you're in constant production, and this is what happens for almost all of our clients, and this has happened for us, you're in constant production. It's very easy to get lost in the forest and you can't see the forest for the trees. It's very easy to just get caught up in like the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing, and you don't have these little breaks either in, a, in the course of a day, in the course of a month, in the course of a quarter, where you can actually take a step back and get in touch with what you're dreaming about, what you're creating again. It is impossible to do vision work, (laughs) creative work when you're in survival mode. Like your Mm -hmm. brain literally Mm -hmm. can't do that at the same time. If you're in survival mode, you're in the trenches, you're thinking about putting out fires, you're solving problems, which is where unfortunately most people spend most of their days, right? Mm -hmm. They haven't cultivated or curated the schedule that has breathing room space. Mm -hmm. So they're just scheduled from morning till night. Now we have you know, I spaciousness is one of my <laughs> standards. It's like, I want space. So this is the practice of having that last week off. It's not really off because we call it an integration week. It's just off of calls. It's off of delivery so that we can plan, we can clean up, we can organize. But we, we usually always go away. We'll go to the mountains for a couple nights. We'll go, you know, maybe do a day trip here or there. But we'll move out of the familiar environment. And shifting the environment and creating space just automatically begins to put you in a different state mm-hmm. in, in the way that you think you rest more. So you're more in your alpha waves. Most of the time we're in nature because we love to hike. So we're in those natural, you know, alpha frequencies more than those beta frequencies of just like, right. We're giving ourselves more time to rest, to, to just play, explore. I love to play, swim in the waterfalls, like whatever we do. And, you know, sometimes we go to Mexico. We sometimes go to the mountains, like for um, over Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, we did about a big chunk of time in Colorado. We skied for a bit, but then we took some courses together and we had, you know, set up our dreams and expanded our goals for the year for finances and for the vision. And now we're working on bringing our companies together under one united mission. So the, again, sometimes what happens is we get frustrated. We think, okay, well, we're going to go out for a date night and we're going to talk about our goals tonight. 
but we have like a all this unresolved conflict we have all this stuff that's been stacking and i have these resentment where that's brooding and you know that he's putting out fires and you both are still in firefighter mode with walls up and you're holding spears mm -hmm. and you're going yeah let's talk about the dream well what's your dream that's not my dream that's not what i want why do you want that and the next thing you know you're fighting because, and you're upset and somebody's crying and man, I've been there. I've been coaching clients who've been there. We've been at live events where clients have been there and they just can't seem to get on the same page. And they're trying to talk about dreams and trying to talk about the goals and what they want, but there's too much garbage mm -hmm. in the way. So I want to say that if you are going to implement this practice, you need to implement time, a transition to to honor the clearing out of the garbage. It reminds me of the event that you did for the people, the culture. Okay, we're shifting to culture for a minute, team culture. But you know, sometimes we'll work with companies where there's a lot of dissension, grumbling among the people. Maybe there's been a lot of turnover, inconsistency in leadership, people leaving. Mm -hmm. And sometimes leaders come in, they go to an event, they get a great idea. They're like, hey, we're going to change the culture. They call everybody in and try to download the vision on these people that are really pissed off at you and don't trust you and don't believe a word that's coming out of your mouth. They feel invisible. They feel totally taken advantage of. Yeah. And you're trying to shove a vision down their throat. Do you think they give two hoots about your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a no. That would, that's, that's, a, that's a hard it's a it's hard, a hard no. no. It's one of those, uh, it, it's the, the surefire way to experience a lot of grift and grind in your change process. For yeah. sure. For sure. So in, in summary on this conversation, right, this, this takes a lot of time. It's going to take, a, it's going to take some resources. It's going to take some planning. You're gonna have to figure out what to do with the kids. You're gonna have to figure out yeah. uh, where, where, if you're going to go somewhere, where are you going to go? What's it going to look like? What, you know, what can you do with the budget that you have? But here's the thing at the end of the day, make it a priority at least once a quarter, every 90 days, you got go to take that together. last week of the month weekend, and you block even. it off, mm -hmm. you block it off. And what, here's what you do is you go block it off now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause here's, what's going to happen. <clears throat> I was just talking to a client yesterday on a coaching call who, who's just trying to take two days in the month of April to, to just like, pool his jets um, had a lot yes. of weather issues in, in his part of the country that affected a lot of other events and other things that he was producing and having to do so everything got truncated had to do it in a smaller amount of time then he got sick and it's just all these things that you know he was just running so hard so he needs two days so he blocked off I don't think it was like the 18th and 19th of the month or something like that that was just going to be for him to go kind of have this reset and the moment that he blocks that of course what happens someone calls mm -hmm. right and says hey i know i know that you got the day off but can you just do this this one meeting right well, here's what happens that one meeting is going to turn into two and you're like well you know what the hell i'm here for half the day might as well just do half a day right and then you never get a chance to fully decompress from that time so you, once you get that time in the calendar and i kid you not this happens every single time something will always some, try it's, to come it's, it's up something with the kids or something with the ex or something with the business or something with whatever will happen every single time when you when you block this time so you have to become very defensive of it and and so that is block. what a warrior of the heart does you are fiercely protected you, you gotta protect the time that's one yeah. of the biggest things i can tell you about it and the benefit of doing so is that it allows you time um to to, to fully disconnect from the, the normal day to day, you do very little, you know, actual work. It's just letting the brain breathe a little bit. You're, you're slowing everything down. <clears throat> and it's, it's like the old Abe Lincoln quote or whatever. He gets credit with it on the internet now. Who knows where it originally came from? But he said, if I was given six hours to, sh to, to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening my axe. Mm -hmm. What most of us do is we roll out of bed, we pick up our axe in the morning, and we start swinging away. Yeah. Right? And then we do that every day. And because we get so frustrated and we get so get, in some Chomp. ways it actually, it feels good to just be chopping because that's what you know, that becomes the standard. This, this gives you a chance to truly sit down, hand over your ax to the sharpener person, <laughs> to whoever does that, let them go sharpen it up so you can go recuperate your body, recuperate your mind, re recuperate your spirit, and then reconnect with your and person. Th yeah. And this is deep nourishment for your marriage. Mm -hmm. Like you're, marriage needs oxygen your marriage needs time your marriage needs space you've got to have space in your marriage to be surprised to let opportunities come to you guys if you guys are scheduled as a family 
as a couple all the time, every weekend, there's something going on. There's kids activities. Like there's no room for God to drop anything into your life as a couple. So you, again, this is an agreement, right? That we agree that we are going to operate in the place of multiplication of expansion instead of contraction all the time. We're going to operate in the, in the space and the operating system where there's room for more to come into our lives, more of the right things, more of the aligned things, which means that you need to be fiercely protective of this space, the canvas, the blank mm-hmm. canvas, right? If I give you a blank canvas and I was like, okay, you can paint anything you want. Sometimes you need to just stare at the blank canvas for a while, right? And really decide, what do I want? Sometimes you start playing with it. But imagine if the minute I gave you a blank canvas, you just threw a bunch of paint on it right away. And then the next one and the next one, and you never got a moment to drop into like, what are we creating? What's the big picture, right? So again, there's time for Reef slept in the back of the pickup truck and popped up, pulled over in the woods and slept in the woods in the back of the pickup truck. There's times that we spent you know, a week in a five-star all, all-inclusive resorts. There's times we've spent this in tree houses. We like it ebbs and or flows stayed home. or stayed home and done a staycation, but really protected. And I want to say this, if you don't keep the promises to yourself, you are not going to keep your promises to anyone else. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the first person you got to mm-hmm. lead is yourself. So when I hear this all the time, when people say, if I only had, I just, I just need more time in the day. I'm like, no, you don't need more time. Because if you don't know how to manage the time you already have, you don't need more time. Okay? You don't need more women in your life. If you already don't know how to handle the woman you have, like she will multiply you. It, you got to learn how to use what God put in your hand. And ladies, same for you. Okay, the last one. So that is the time. That's your dreaming time, your couple time. That's the deep nourishment. That's how you birth new things, right? You need a blank canvas. The last conversation that has really shifted the game for us is the money conversation. Okay, so think about this. We've talked about we've talked about the spiritual life. We've talked about the mindset, the planning. We've talked about the transition, which often for us is the sauna or the walk. So we're stacking. I want you to pay attention. We're stacking workouts with time, with conversation. Like we're doing a whole bunch of stacks here. The wealth meeting, we call it kingdom wealth. Mm-hmm. Most couples get divorced over money misaligned visions, right? Or problems around sex or something. So money is a big one. It's a hot topic. We have money trauma. We have money baggage. We are, you know, terrified about money. It's a huge security blanket for us. So we even went through this where, look, we grew up with very different financial backgrounds, very different role models for money, money stories, observing how our parents handled money very differently. We both came from marriages and relationships where our spouses handled money very differently, where we operated businesses very differently financially. So when you come together, you know, for a while there, it was like, okay, I'm going to have my money. You have your money. I have my accounts. You have your accounts. My credit, your credit, mine, yours, which is fine until you decide we want to next level our marriage. We want a rocket fuel. We're not just going to keep running in our own lane, avoiding the difficult conversations because there was tension. There was money tension. All right. And it wasn't around. It was like, obviously it's about deeper than that. Right. It's never about the money, but what it did was it allowed us when, when I, a couple of things happened. Number one, we wanted to, we, we started to see that the more we were unified, the blueprint for us was the more we got aligned, the more we came into integrity the more blessings, the more flow, the the more everything started to happen in our life. Mm-hmm. Secondly, we really started asking God to trust us with more. Trust us with more leadership, with better people, with our children. Da, da. And, you know, one of the things is like, well, can I trust you with money? Can I trust you with talents? Can I trust you to steward well? So we really adopted this identity that we are stewards and multipliers of everything that God's given us. So you know what? We need to get over ourselves. We need to get over our money trauma and money <clears throat> drama from the past, our money mistakes. We've all made them. If you're an entrepreneur, you've made bad financial mistakes, okay? Like if you're an entrepreneur, you've overpaid people for way too long. You've invested in programs you wish you could have gotten out of. You've Like we've done this and we can sit there and beat ourselves up, but we have to be able to go, okay, we're going to be responsible with numbers We're going to be responsible with Mm -hmm. being conscious creators of what we want to build. And so we started putting this kingdom wealth meeting on the calendar. We don't always hit it. This is probably the one that we can continue to improve on. And to be honest, it's probably the one that we still are working on the most. And Mm -hmm. it's been really good because number one, this time blocked. Mark has built this incredible spreadsheets. (laughs) He likes spreadsheets. 
And, but it has allowed us to just get neutral about the information to well, look at it and build a plan. Full transparency. I don't like spreadsheets. <laughs> okay. They are, they are very, well, you're good at building them. They're very functional tools that allow us to create a common space that we just share. It's in a, it's in a Google sheet. She's got access. I got access. We go in there and as a bill gets paid, the mortgage gets paid, the electric bill gets paid, the, uh, the, the truck payment gets made, whatever, all the different payments. We track get everything. Made, we track everything in the sheet so uh, to the penny now if we can and for long you know for longest time most of my life that was not my not my mo you know it's like hey if there's money in the account we can cash flow a month like let's find a way to make it happen and now and, and that you know honestly that got us to a point like we could probably run like a pretty decent life and a pretty decent lifestyle to a point just doing it that way however we're not looking for something that's just a pretty decent life and a pretty decent lifestyle. We're looking to live an extraordinary life with an extraordinary relationship. And and, and we leave, really want to be royal, and, generous givers yeah, from and, overflow. And leave an extraordinary legacy. So it, it called us up to start having this conversation. It called me up as a leader to sit down and really look at the numbers, create the family spreadsheet. Same thing I've been, you know, that I generally have for the business. And, and go through and create this, uh, this this thing that we can have a conversation around. And so we just sit down once, twice a month. We go through this thing in detail. Hey, how are we doing? How much money did we spend on date nights last, last month? Let's go look that up. That goes what through a certain waste, that yeah. goes through a certain credit card, and then that gets tracked. And we you know we take the points, we pay it off, uh, but you know we, we put that in as a line item so that we know and like hey here's what was budgeted for that. How do we do according to that budget? Hey, we got to rein it in. We've had a couple months. We're like mm, we got to rein that. Or we noticed there was a lot of waste, right? Yeah, We're like, wow, there yeah. was a lot of waste there. And we really want to yeah. be investing. We want to be debt-free. We want to be investing mm -hmm. um, more. That's one of our personal goals. Is so we to, took and we wrote down yeah. every single debt, everything that we owe. And that has been put into the spreadsheet, and then we're tracking against that and aggressively pursuing the payment, the paying off of all the things uh, that we owe to people or banks or, or whatever, or credit cards or whatever, and all that just getting squared away. And we're working on that as quickly as possible. So what happened, as soon as we started making that a conversation, we paid off a lot of debt, right? Yeah. And, and we're continuing to pay off a, a, you know, more of that, and then eventually, you know, be able to attack the mortgage and all the things in life that are that are important. But you know, I have to say this about the money piece, right? I mean. Probably a lot of you grew up like I did in that the conversation around money was that there isn't one or just that it's embarrassing because you didn't have enough, mm. right? And so because there was no conversation you, or very little conversation, you didn't have a good model of the world given to you for how to talk about money. And then two, um, if, if, if you grew up without a lot of money, you were just generally embarrassed that you didn't have um, a, enough money or you just, you know, there was nothing to talk about around money. So the the conversation feels awkward, right? You, 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 you've all experienced a moment where you got six friends sitting around a table, you, you've gone out to eat together and it's been a, just a joyous conversation. You had a few drinks, you had a great meal and it was fun and everything is all well and good until the bill comes out and you got to decide how are we going to split it, right? And then so sometimes somebody's like, they don't even want the awkward conversations so they're like, I'll just pay for it, <laughs> right? Or we got to decide who's paying for what. And, and the, the, so now it becomes more tense and awkward. So take that into your relationship where everybody starts to know all the gritty details about your money and where it's at or where it's not. And it can, and it can get amplified. So creating an objective spreadsheet and then having that common vision for what you want to create. I think we're aligned. We want to buy land. We want to build right, um, a, a, a retreat center where we can bring you guys in to come hang out with us in, per, in person and do cold plunges and carry you know carry water and chop wood and get off the grid <laughs> and get dirty and and uh, or or stay in a luxury suite like those are things cold are plunges in the waterfall let's just <laughs> clarify <laughs> yeah so that's what Christine and I are, are aligned one of the things that we're aligned on creating well it doesn't get to happen if we're not aligned in having this kingdom wealth conversation so definitely yeah. something it's it's one of those conversations that's been a growing effort for us but it has cleaned up so much. For us in the last six months or so yeah and it has really made us reevaluate our values like really look at our values reprioritize our values mm -hmm. like what are the things that matter most and we spent so many years just chasing getting goals right let's get the next 
you know, revenue, hit the next revenue number, more sales, more profitability, more staff, whatever the thing was. And the last couple of years, we've really started to shift and make a commitment. Like we talked about giving the best, the first fruits. That's a biblical principle. That's a God thing. We believe that everything that we are given we, is just borrowed. We're just managing. We're stewarding it. It's God's house. It's God's businesses. It's God's money. They're even God's children. We get to like be called their parents on this planet. Like we're their earth parents. But it has freed us that we don't have to carry all this load and all this pressure. So we really believe in the tithe. That means giving the first 10%, like not giving, but like releasing the first 10% of everything to come back. We pray about it. God, this is your money. Where's the first 10% go? That redeems the rest of your money. That blesses the rest of your money. And it is a biblical principle that God says, test me in this, right? Give me the best of the 10%. See if I will not throw open the, you know, the barn doors and help you, uh, live from overflow. So that's from Malachi, just paraphrase that. But the point is, ever since we started doing this, we started to get excited again about money, about giving. We started having tithing goals, giving goals. Mm -hmm. And we just saw that our vision expanded so much more. It got way bigger. Uh, the ideas around money, creative strategy, or the businesses, divine solutions, creative strategies for how to do the business, how to bring our businesses together. The how started changing. Mm -hmm. Right. When we shifted this. So I just wanted to say this, that this one practice and this one conversation will open the door to so many other things. Do, do, do getting dropped into right order, your values, your dreams, like getting rid of stuff that's waste, like getting you guys to stretch your vision. A lot of that will come from having the hard conversations, the ones you've been avoiding and just cleaning that out. So um, I just want to recap, unless you have anything else to add to that kingdom wealth. That's all. That's what we call it. Call it whatever you want, right? Money maker talk. Like, you know, um, for us, we're kingdom stewards. We're a king and a queen. We believe that we've been entrusted with a kingdom, and we want to manage it well. We want to multiply it well. We want to steward it well. Absolutely. That's that's it. Just keep it a priority. Remember, when you get into the conversations, and it's you're embarrassed or he's embarrassed or she's embarrassed or, or you're pissed or, off, or you're, or you're, you know, like what the heck are you doing? Or why are we spending money on this? Or maybe you discover something that one or both of you forgot about or, or somebody was hiding or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, remember you're on the same mission. Like you love each other. You're, yeah. you're, you're in this together. <clears throat> so be willing to walk through those things and, and um, just, just work through it together. Yeah. And grace, lots of grace. Cause again, mm -hmm. a lot of that hiding is like, we are we haven't truly come into agreement that we're here to support one another the dreams the visions right i see this so much in entrepreneurship and owner businesses where we're hiding things from our spouse about what we're doing over here in this one area of our life it's so much it's not about the money right there's something else going on that you guys aren't talking about so you guys, just to recap the five conversations that we have on a regular basis, number one is the daily brief. Get on the same page. Talk about the things, right? Don't just assume you guys should know. What conversations are you having on repeat all the time that are just sucking up bandwidth that you can automate, that you can create a new fun system for? Upgrade that. Number two is the daily prayer. Like get together, meditate together, pray together. That can look like just having a conversation with God. That can look like worshiping together. It can look like anything, right? Number three, clean it up, clean up the energy, do some transitions from work to home, have a practice of coming back together. You have to reharmonize, especially if one of you's on the road, you're traveling, mm -hmm. you're leaving the house, you're operating on a different frequency. So when you come back, there's going to naturally be friction. That's normal. That's not abnormal. You need to re-sync up. That's literally an energetic thing. So you got to figure out how to do that. You know, we gave you some options there. Have time to get away together, to dream together, to play together, to explore. Put that on your calendar. Protect it fiercely. There's going to be times where he's protecting it. There's going to be times where I protect it. You've got to speak up. Don't talk yourselves out of it. Keep the promises you make to each other. And finally, have the money conversations, right? Have the conversations about the things, whatever it is you've been avoiding. Trust me, the great relationship is on the other side of the things that you've been avoiding talking about. So I want to thank you all for being here. I'm so happy to have these conversations with Mark. It's just fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun. fun. It is fun. So you should you, have me on more often. I should. And you should have me on your podcast more often. <laughs> no, but I think that we're going to do more series about relationships. 
Definitely feeling a relationship specific course coming through. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, you guys, a couple things. Number one, if you have not ordered the book yet, pre-order is up for Drop the Armor. It's dropping June 3rd. This marriage, these conversations, this lifestyle, all of the things that you see that I live, breathe, talk about, have are on the other side of that journey that I went through, that I walk you through in Drop the Armor. It is a journey of releasing your past ways of thinking, your past identities, your past ways of running relationships, communicating with each other, and really saying yes to what God has for you. You've got to release the weight. You've got to move forward lighter. I teach you how to do that in the book. Make sure you pre-order. We have some awesome bonuses, bonus guided visualizations, bonus training, launch party. So you can follow the link below, share it with friends, get multiple copies. I guarantee it's going to be an awesome, awesome read for you. Secondly, if you have not already subscribed and reviewed this podcast, you guys, this is how we spread the word. This is how we share the message. We hit share, we forward, we subscribe, we review, we stay part of the conversation. And this is how you become an ambassador and help really spread this message. So I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for following along. Until next time, here's to loving fiercely and leading courageously as warriors of the heart. We'll see you in the next episode.